Hey everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. We have some breaking news to share with you tonight. A fire broke out at a home in Exeter this evening. Crews responded to that home at 1655 Exeter Road shortly after 8 p.m. A member of the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office tells, us, tells our crew on scene that the family and their dog were able to safely escape. However, there is still a cat missing. We will bring you any updates as we get them. We also hope to have more information on Good Morning Maine. Meanwhile, for the second day in a row, bomb threat hoaxes have sent have been sent to government targets in Maine and around the country. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has the details on those latest threats. On Wednesday, it was state houses and on Thursday, courthouses across the state and country, including the Capitol Judicial Center behind me, became the latest victims of email bomb threats determined to be hoaxes. You know, today's scenario, uh, unfortunately, second verse, same as the first. The type of message went out nationally. It was nondescript, so the threats weren't specifically to uh, our judicial center here in Augusta or, or Portland. It was courthouses in general across the country. Matthew Clancy is the chief of the Maine Capitol Police, which responded to both incidents. The incident on Wednesday that targeted the State House and Thursday's incident, which was received by employees at courthouses in Augusta and Portland, according to Barbara Cardone, the Director of Legal Affairs and Public Relations for Maine State Courts. The incidents are related. Chief Clancy says they have to take every threat seriously at first, even if they know it's probably a hoax. Um, so then there is the similar exercise is vetting the credibility and then taking uh, protective measures. And uh, that's what took place uh, today. Chief Clancy adds Maine Capitol Police and police across the state and country are always prepared to respond to any threat. However, responding to these threats costs more than just money. It costs manpower or as Chief Clancy describes bandwidth. You know, there are always going to be times when law enforcement will be at maximum bandwidth. Um, but I, you know, I, I guess I would like to come back to the point that there is an awful lot of uh, situation where it is shared, a resource availability shared at any given time. According to Chief Clancy, both investigations are being worked on by FBI task force members. We reached out to the FBI field office in Boston for a statement and received the following response. The FBI takes hoax threats very seriously because it puts innocent people at risk. While we have no information to indicate a specific and credible threat, we will continue to work with our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners to gather, share, and act upon threat information as it comes to our attention. While it's not clear what sparked these bomb threat hoaxes, Chief Clancy says there are a number of domestic and international issues currently fueling upset and hopes this type of threat doesn't become the new normal. Um, I will say that obviously that um, it creates a new layer for us, but it's not anything that we don't previously have plans in place um, as to how we're going to mitigate, how we're going to initially respond and then mitigate. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Meanwhile, we're hearing from Governor Mills for the first time on the Secretary of State's decision to bar former President Trump from the main GOP primary ballot. Up until now, the governor has remained silent on the secretary's decision, but says while she supports that decision, she also respects the process it has to go through. Her spokesperson, Ben Ben Goodman said in a statement, quote, while the secretary was required by law to rule on the petition, the governor believes that the question of whether former President Trump violated the 14th Amendment is a question that must be answered by the courts. And she believes it should be done so nationally rather than in a piecemeal fashion, state by state. Without a judicial determination on that question, she believes that the decision of whether the former president should be considered for the presidency belongs in the hands of the people. The governor also called the threats against Secretary Bellows and her staff alarming and said efforts to impeach the secretary are unjustified. In other news tonight, police say a man has been charged in connection with a shooting incident in Clifton Wednesday morning. The Penobscot County Sheriff's Office says a caller reported firing one shot through a bedroom door after hearing noises inside his house on the Getchell Road. 
Deputies quickly responded to the scene and were able to communicate with the caller over the phone. The sheriff's office says while they were on scene, more shots were fired from inside the residence and neighbors in the immediate area were told to shelter in place or evacuate. During those ongoing communications, deputies were able to convince the caller to put down his firearms and come outside. The 50-year-old man was taken into custody. None of the shots fired during the incident came from the deputies involved. Deputies did search the home, but no other people were inside. However, deputies did locate a family dog that had been shot and was deceased. Deputies utilized the yellow flag law process to take the man into the hospital for a mental health and substance use evaluation. He was then admitted and charged with reckless conduct with a dangerous weapon. The sheriff's office says multiple firearms were seized from that residence. Two people now face charges for an armed robbery at the Big Apple in Madison back in August. 34-year-old Raymond Ellis has been charged with robbery and theft. He was already in jail for allegedly leading police on a chase and hitting several vehicles in Skowhegan in November. 19-year-old Seth Johnson of Skowhegan was summonsed for robbery. Police say two armed men went into the store around 3 a.m. on August 5th, taking money before getting away. Ellis and Johnson are scheduled to appear in court in March. Police say a third person is also expected to be charged. Well, police are searching for a suspect following a reported break-in and theft at a brewer business. Our David Ledford has more. It's horrible. It's horrible. Pretty awful thing to steal money from. Just before 8 a.m. Thursday morning, Brewer police received a report that someone had thrown a brick through the window of the Brewer Redemption Center. Owner Matt Bamford says at least $200 was stolen from a donation box kept by the window for bottles for playful paws, which supports stray animals in the area. Someone came through overnight, threw a brick through the window, and they took a donation box for the stray animals. A little surprise that happened up in this area. It's usually pretty quiet up here and people get desperate and unfortunately that's one of the results. Police say the incident likely took place between 4.15 Wednesday evening and before opening Thursday morning. One employee shared her frustration with the alleged theft. Well, we're doing a service to people and it's almost like people come in and bite the hand that feeds them like I, I don't I don't understand I just don't understand police say there are steps businesses can take to prevent break-ins from happening in the future the best advice I can suggest is uh, as most people do lock your doors uh, invest in a good security system cameras and whatnot to try to help you out to, in the event that this happens at your business Bamford says anyone who wants to support bottles for playful paws can donate their returnables at the center on 391 North Main Street they can drop off anytime Police say the incident is under investigation, and anyone with information is being asked to reach out to the Penobscot Regional Communications Center at 207-945-4636. In Brewer, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The December 18th storm brought dangerous winds and flooding, damaging roads, houses, businesses, and snowmobile trails. Asia Reed tells us how the storm and lack of snow are putting the snowmobile season behind. This time of year in Maine, it's typically time for folks to hit snowmobile trails. But this season looks a little different. Uh, what season? It's very dismal. It has been a very bleak lack of snow. And President of Topsom Trail Riders Snowmobile Club Jenny Little says no snow has been a disappointment. But even if it did snow, most clubs aren't ready. Their trail systems taking a major hit during the December 18th storm. You didn't know where to start because it's just crisscross and trees and you just don't know where to begin. With damage comes a lot of cleanup and costly challenges. I think the, the funding um, is, can be a, a big one for a club at this time. That's why Franklin County commissioners are doing what they can to help the snowmobile clubs. So this is an emergency. Yeah, time is on the essence. At their meeting on Tuesday, Franklin County commissioners voted to put aside $100,000 in funds to help repair those damaged trails. It seems to me that snowmobile season, we're up against it. If we, yeah, we're so if we don't kind of stack something going here. According to a University of Maine study, snowmobiling brought in around $600 million to the state's economy in 2019. Little says she hopes this season will shape up, and if Maine doesn't see enough snow this year, 
I'm hopeful that folks can travel. If we can't, I think we're just going to work on um, bettering uh, and preparing for ATV season. Wow. Well, we certainly have the chilly temperatures that you would expect with this time of year. Right. It is a shame that we have fallen short in snow so far, but it is early. Let us not forget. Yes, it definitely yeah. is early, and it sounds like, you know, thankfully some of the white stuff could be on the way could as be. early as this weekend. Let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast and see what's coming. All right, thank you. Look what we did today. High temperature 39 here in Bangor, also Bar Harbor 34 Milnaka. That's way above the averages, but then the cold front came through. Temperatures crashing ever since. Gusty northwest wind in there as well. Well, I feel like temperatures down near zero overnight tonight. The wind's currently gusting near 21 or so, so it's cold out there. It's windy out there, and we're going to keep dropping the temperatures overnight tonight. The front has gone through. The flurries are now out of here. We'll have decreasing clouds across the area tonight. That will give us that radiational cool and that's going to give us low temperatures pretty much in the teens. And then we wait. Tomorrow's going to be a nice day, Saturday as well, before our next weather maker gets in here later on Sunday. That could be some snow we'll be shoveling on Sunday afternoon. Our forecast, though, tonight, they're looking at mostly clear skies, low temperatures in the teens. Your full forecast is coming up. All righty, Jeff, thank you so much. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, a group of lobstermen push back against the proposed use of mandatory tracking devices on their boats. And residents in Winter Harbor celebrate the construction of the town's first ever cell tower. Love those stories and more local news when we come right back. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Brockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. CEMDP Porter Contractors has been in business for over 40 years in the Bangor area. We specialize in commercial, medical, and residential design build construction, as well as building maintenance and renovations. CEM DP Porter Contractors is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions, including carpenters and a project manager superintendent. We offer vacation, holidays, a 3% IRA match, competitive pay, and a family-oriented environment. If interested in applying, please contact Jason at 848-7486. Do you need to replace your old, worn-out windows? Then you need to call Renewal by Anderson today. We're the replacement window division of Anderson, which means you can get your project started right away by scheduling a free in-home consultation. Ask your consultant about pricing options, including our one-year price lot guarantee quote. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. This fantastic money-saving deal with great financing and soon. Installation is always included. Call now. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. The baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. From the heaven! All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ Door. PDQDoor.com. Hi there, I'm Emma Smith and coming up on Good Morning Maine, the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office will be receiving a large donation from the Spirit of Blue Foundation to equip the department with more safety equipment. Plus, we'll hear from the Bar Harbor Aquarium to get a look at how the animals get taken care of in the off-season. These stories and more coming up on Good Morning Maine. Winter conditions may be uncomfortable for us, but they become a real problem for individuals who are homeless. Our Matthew Jaroncic spoke to the homeless at Bangor's largest encampment, known as Tent City, about how they're getting by and efforts being made to help them. Tackling homelessness has been a priority for Bangor officials, moving 20 individuals living along Valley Avenue last year. These efforts continue as the winter conditions worsen. I'm thankful for the people I did get into homes right off. I wasn't here when they were doing all that, um, but 
I think that, you know, it was great that they did that to keep people warm and safe. While some individuals are getting the chance to start a new opportunity somewhere warm, others like Bella O'Byrne said they're doing what they can in these frigid temperatures. People are using generators, um, propane tanks, uh, fires, coals. Staying warm and getting the necessary essentials are what O'Byrne says is helping her get through these tough times. I'm not sure um, what groups come in here, um, but they come in and they bring food and drinks and water. Community Health and Counseling Services is one group that's helping. They were out walking along 10 City Thursday, talking to individuals about taking part in the state's landlord liaison program. It's a way to break down the barriers between landlords and those experiencing homelessness. Ariel and everyone, they try real hard to help everyone and they do a great job. Despite not finding any housing yet, Spring says he doesn't plan on giving up. I fill out applications online to get in a place and they open the building over here that's uh, the Pine Tree Inn for the homeless in March. And hopefully I can try to get in there and see if I get denied on that. And all you do is keep trying to move on. In Bangor, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Five Maine lobstermen with the support of the Sustainable Maine Fishing Foundation are pushing back against the requirement to have tracking devices on their vessels. They filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court alleging the recent rules by the Maine Department of Marine Resources present an immediate and serious risk to the constitutionally, constitutionally protected privacy of Maine lobstermen. President of the Maine Lobstering Union, Virginia Olson, says lobstermen who live on outer islands use their boats for many things like getting groceries and even emergency medical services when needed. She says the regulations require the tracking devices to be on and operational even when the lobstermen aren't fishing. We're not against data. We're not against science. We support it. We ask for it. Um, but there has to be some line of protection for the fishermen themselves. Um, when we looked into the black box, there was a lot of information that could be used for sighting offshore wind, and that's a direct conflict with our fishery. Olson says lobstermen want to know how the data will be used. They also want to have access to it. She says right now there are a lot of questions and concerns. A fund has been set up to help them. Tax deductible donations can be sent to Sustainable Maine Fishing Foundation at 150 Bar Harbor Road in Trenton. Well, the residents of Winter Harbor are looking forward to being more connected as construction is about to begin on the town's very first cellular tower. This new addition is expected to be particularly beneficial to the area's first responders. Our Grace Blanchard has details. You know, it's really abysmal. We have no bars most of the time. In today's world, the lack of cellular service can be very disconnecting, which is how the residents of Winter Harbor have been feeling for years. Um, it's been really, really severe for everybody. They've just, I've heard so many complaints. When I'm going to text someone, it's the only way to do it, and then that text may not deliver for hours. But that's all about to change as the town is getting its very first cellular tower. Like we're the last town on the planet to have a cell tower, but, you know, it's and it's been a long time coming. Um, the lack of service has been particularly troubling for the area first responders, whose communication systems rely on access to cellular service. If we're in an area and there's an alert that comes through and we don't have access, then we're not getting that alert. Chief Mitchell says this is something they've desperately needed for a long time. Very hopeful for this. Uh, this, I think this will be an amazing upgrade for our town, the town people, and for public safety. And residents are looking forward to feeling more connected with the rest of the world. It makes it hard for people to connect, especially the older folks that are stuck at home or they can't get out in the winter and their cell phone sometimes that's the only thing they have. So this will help everybody in general. Construction on the tower will be taking place over the next couple weeks and is projected to be fully operational by this spring. In Winter Harbor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
Wow. There are certainly a lot of dead spots uh, in oh. rural areas, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, for an entire town to be so disconnected like that, you know, it definitely sounds like it's a long time coming for them. I mean, and it's more than an, it's more than an inconvenience. It's unsafe. You right. know, when you're cut off from services, you can't communicate with people. So that really is a long time coming and, and glad to see that it's going to happen. Yeah, really glad. All right. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. News on Fox 22, a shooter opened fire at a high school in Iowa, killing at least one student. We'll have the latest details. And the Department of Justice announces it is suing Texas over its strict new illegal immigration bill. We'll have those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We call Jeb Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything, representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Hi, Todd from Dorsey Furniture here with great news for anybody contemplating new furniture in the new year. Right now and until January 8th, selected floor samples throughout our showroom are half off the list price. These items won't last long and delivery will cost you a little extra, so bring your truck or trailer and take home the beautiful new furniture you've been waiting for. Dorsey Furniture Route 1A Holden, open seven days a week. Start the new year with beautiful new furniture from Dorsey Furniture. Live well, my friends. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy here, pay here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. Pro football fans, it's You Pick 'em NFL, the Pro Football Challenge from Fox 22. Go to foxbangor.com, click on You Pick 'em, and go to You Pick 'em NFL. Make your picks, and you could be the weekly winner of either a $25 gift certificate from Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor or from Chick fil A in Bangor. Brought to you by Mainly Eyes in Bangor, Twin City Tile in Brewer, Twin City Tint in Brewer, and Winterport Sheds. Compete all season long for the grand prize of $5,000. It's You Pick 'em NFL from foxbangor.com. Before the podcast, before the documentaries, there was America's Most Wanted. The show that brought true crime to TV is back with the man who started it all. I'm John Walsh, host of America's Most Wanted. We're more connected than ever, and you can help solve cases like never before. This time, I'm bringing in my son Callahan to help. America's Most Wanted premieres January 22nd on Fox. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Police say a sixth grader was killed and five other people wounded by a student who opened fire inside a small Iowa high school in Perry. Fox's Caroline Shively reports. The small town of Perry, Iowa is in mourning after a student walked into his school and shot six people before classes started Thursday morning, killing a sixth grader. Police did not name a motive for the shooting, but the boy's friends say he and his younger sister had been bullied. I've been going to that school my entire life and those kids would do horrible things to him. He got tired of the harassment. Was it a smart idea to shoot up the school? No. God, no. And I, I am mad at him for that. Lord knows I am mad at him for that. Four of the injured are students and the fifth is the school's principal. Police say the shooter was armed with a pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun. When they searched the building, authorities found the suspect dead from a gunshot wound. They also found an improvised explosive device. The state fire marshal and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms rendered the device safe. Police say the shooter had posted videos on social media in and around the time of the attack, but would not give specifics, noting they're still gathering evidence. White House officials report President Biden was tracking the shooting and federal officials are helping support the investigation. They also said it was another call to action for Congress. Congress must act to enact universal background checks, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, require safe storage of firearms, 
and the gun industry's immunity from liability and pass a national red flag law. Law enforcement officials believe the shooter acted alone. Caroline Shively, Fox News. Well, the gloves will soon be off. President Biden is about to take on his predecessor directly in a series of upcoming campaign events designed to portray Donald Trump as the ultimate threat to democracy. The focus on Trump comes even though a single vote hasn't been cast yet in the GOP primary process. We go back to Fox's Caroline Shively. Unlike his Republican rivals, President Biden's campaigning has been pretty quiet until now. There's an extremist movement does not share the basic beliefs in our democracy. The Biden-Harris campaign has launched this new ad against Donald Trump featuring photos from January 6th. If you can't sing, you got to dance. And in politics, if you can't rise above, you're going to have to drag everybody else down with you. On Friday, the president is set to give a speech near Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, marking this weekend's anniversary of the Capitol riot. A Washington Post University of Maryland poll finds that 53 percent of Americans believe Trump bears a great deal or a good amount of responsibility for January 6th. That's 86 percent of Democrats and 14 percent of Republicans. The Biden campaign seems squarely focused on Mr. Trump, as national polls show the former president beating his GOP competition by 50 points. Going to Valley Forge, setting the stakes, reminding people the choice between him and Trump is exactly what re-election campaigns should and do do. On Monday, President Biden will visit the Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, where white supremacists murdered nine people. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. The swell of migrants along the southwest border is forging some unlikely bipartisanship. We're getting a clearer view of exactly who's coming across and what their intentions are. Fox's Bill Malusian is in Eagle Pass with the latest. A moment of bipartisanship in Laredo, Texas today, as Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Henry Cuellar held a joint press conference about international bridge permits. But the conversation quickly shifted to the border crisis. When it comes to border security, there is a very sharp disagreement between the Biden administration and I think most Texans. And, and what's happening on border security is catastrophic. Congressman Cuellar highlighted his efforts to get support staff hired for border agents. I don't think Border Patrol or CBP, men and women in blue, should be changing diapers, should be making sandwiches for migrants. In Lukeville, Arizona, Fox News cameras witness more mass illegal crossings, mostly made up of men from Africa. That's where Fox encountered this man from Guinea, who held what appeared to be a New York State ID card in his hand as he pleaded with Border Patrol to let him through the breached border wall. Please, 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 my brother, please don't let me hear. And as sanctuary cities continue to complain about Texas's migrant busing program, which has transported over 90,000 migrants to blue cities, Governor Abbott says the busing operation has pulled a mask off those sanctuary jurisdictions. They profess to be sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. They want to welcome them in until they actually do come in. And then when they come in, they say, no, 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 we don't want them here. And CBP sources tell Fox News there have already been just over 800,000 migrant encounters at the southern border just since October 1st. That is a population size bigger than the city of Denver coming across the border in just three months. And it's also big enough to fill up eight Rose Bowls. Reporting in Eagle Pass, Texas, Bill Malugin, Fox News. New details tonight on the Epstein documents emerging today after nearly 200 names which had been previously redacted were made public. Fox's Nate Foy is in New York with the latest. Newly unsealed court documents reveal more about convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein's social orbit. Former President Bill Clinton is mentioned nearly 50 times in the documents, including by Epstein accuser Johanna Schoberg. Asked by a lawyer during a deposition, quote, did Jeffrey ever talk to you about Bill Clinton? Schoberg responded, quote, he said one time that Clinton likes them young, referring to girls. Clinton is described as having a close personal relationship with Epstein, but a Clinton spokesperson tells Fox News the two last spoke almost 20 years ago. Schoberg also claims she visited former President Donald Trump's casino with Epstein in Atlantic City. Neither former presidents are accused of wrongdoing. 
In addition to earlier accounts involving Britain's Prince Andrew and an orgy involving underage girls, one document reads, quote, Jane Doe number three was forced to have sexual relations with this prince when she was a minor. In London, at Ghislaine Maxwell's apartment, in New York, and on Epstein's private island, in an orgy with numerous other underage girls. Another claim describes a photograph with Prince Andrew jokingly groping Schoberg and a puppet's hand placed on Epstein's alleged victim, Virginia Giuffre's breast. Prince Andrew reached a settlement with Giuffre in 2022, providing a statement that reads, quote, Prince Andrew regrets his association with Epstein and commends the bravery of Miss Giuffre and other survivors in standing up for themselves and others. Prince Andrew denies any wrongdoing. Other names unsealed include singer Michael Jackson, attorney Alan Dershowitz, and magician David Copperfield, who Schoberg claims, quote, question me if I was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls. In total, the documents will include at least 170 names tied to Epstein. Lawyers for Giuffre say roughly 240 documents will be unsealed in total. It could take until Monday to see all of them. Many of the people named in the documents are not accused of any wrongdoing. In New York, Nate Foy, Fox News. Well, still to come on, on Fox 22 News at 10, we'll check in with researchers at the Bar Harbor Oceanarium about what they're working on this winter season. And in sports, Bangor Ice Hockey is out to a hot start. How their play and added motivation from a fallen local legend is driving them. We'll be right back. Sharpen your knives. We are back. Let's go. This season, you'll have to earn your place on one of our teams. Are you ready? Next Level Chef returns January 28th on Fox. Don't get cold feet this winter. Stay warm and dry with high-performance footwear from Comfort Shoes and more. With an extensive selection of winter boots rated from 0 to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll find comfort in knowing your feet will be warm in any weather. Discover the latest in functional and fashionable footwear with grippers built right into the sole. With boots in stock up to 6E and size 17 for men and women. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. Are your gutters weighed down by debris causing them to sag and overflow? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. Clogged gutters lead to costly repairs for your home, so skip the cleaning and stop the clogs with Gutter Shutter. Gutter Shutter, the world's best gutter, is a high-performance gutter with a lifetime no-clog guarantee. Stop the clutter, get Gutter Shutter. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. Maine Commercial Solar offers a variety of services including solar system design, sales, maintenance, and installation. Maine Commercial Solar can help you with existing or new systems. We offer packages for installation by others or we can help you build your own solar array, smaller residential or anything in between. Maine Commercial Solar is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions. We offer competitive pay, a 3% IRA match, vacation, holiday time, and a family-oriented environment. If interested, please call Jason at 848-7486. Roto-Rooter has served the Greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Marvin Flute, I should have known you'd be Friday drunk on a Tuesday. On January 7th. Glad you're back, Flute. This place has been dead without you. <laughs> Only one man can catch the most diabolical criminals. The killer is taunting us. And he's got absolutely gorgeous penmanship. I'm the world's most smartest detective. That's how good I am. I defy the rules of grammar. Grimsburg. Special preview Sunday, January 7th on Fox. A U.S. congressional delegation is in Israel. The visit comes as the Israeli military continues to strike targets in Gaza, forcing people to flee through muddy and flooded streets following a night of heavy rain. Fox's Trey Yingst has the latest from Tel Aviv. 
Israel's ground troops are advancing deeper into southern and central Gaza as the country's air force conducts new strikes against Hamas positions. 90 days into the war, the IDF says they've taken out new anti-tank cells amid fierce ground fighting. Our forces continue to advance in the war. We are now focused on the southern part of the strip. On the other side of the border, a bipartisan group of lawmakers toured the kibbutz of Niroz Thursday afternoon. The community was ravaged by Iran-backed Hamas and other Palestinian factions on October 7th. Iowa Senator Joni Ernst calling on President Biden to take tougher action against Iran and its proxies. We have a very weak president right now. Um, America looks weak on the world stage, and we have Iran willing to take advantage of that. With or without the United States, Israel has indicated it will act against threats on its border. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant met today with U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hochstein about escalating tension with the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah telling Hochstein that the window is closing to find a diplomatic solution on the northern front. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu echoed that sentiment during a meeting with U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham earlier in the day. We're absolutely committed to achieving our war games, that is destroying our war goals, destroying Hamas, releasing our hostages, making sure Gaza doesn't become a threat again. The American political visits come as the war in Gaza continues to test the Israel-U.S. relationship. Tonight, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken left for a Middle East trip. He'll arrive here in Tel Aviv on Monday. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yinkst, Fox News. And as war rages on in Gaza, tensions are escalating across the Middle East. On Thursday, the U.S. targeted an Iraqi militia leader following dozens of attacks on American forces in the region. Fox's senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Palcott has that story. A U.S. drone strike killing Iranian-backed militia fighters and a high-ranking commander in Iraq on Thursday. U.S. officials confirming to Fox News the precision strike took place on a vehicle in the capital city of Baghdad. The target, an Iraqi militia leader believed to be behind recent attacks on U.S. troops. It is important to note that the strike was taken in self-defense that no civilians were harmed, and that no infrastructure or facilities were struck. Iraq's military condemned the strike, calling it a, quote, unprovoked attack on an Iraqi security body operating in accordance with powers granted to it. Since the middle of October, pro-Iranian militias have launched more than 100 attacks on American forces in the region. All have been seen as a response to the United States' support of Israel in its war with Hamas. Thursday strike marked the eighth time the U.S. has responded. Iran uses their proxies to avoid direct conflict with the United States. Why? Because they know full well they would lose their regime if they had direct conflict with the United States. It comes as fears grow over a broader regional war. In Israel, officials say they are reinforcing troops on the northern border as they face threats from the Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon. We are going to change our routine defense measures. We are going to have more soldiers on the borders for at least the next year. Secretary of State Antony Blinken traveled to the Middle East on Thursday to discuss rising tensions in the region. In London, Greg Palcott, Fox News. All right, and coming up, we have our full five-day forecast. So is there any snow in our future? We're about to find out. Mm, indeed. All right. Look at us, high temperatures back in the 30s today, but that was way earlier. Now the cold fronts come through, temperatures are crashing out there, and it's windy. Details on that when I come back. I had a slip and fall accident. I wasn't sure what to do. Joe Bornstein's office handled everything. The experience was much better than what I expected. They were very professional and responsive to all my questions and concerns. I highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Over 25,000 victories for injured Mainers just like me. If you've been injured in an accident, call Joe. It's that easy. Tell them you mean business. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from, including both modern and retro games. We have weeknight specials consisting of 
We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orono Arcade. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. So here's what you do. Guy gets a sack. You go, sacked you very much. What else? How about sack of all trades? Boom, sack a lack of Saccharoni and cheese. I like saccharoni and cheese. Starving. I'm too sexy for this shirt. Well, but you could say that. I would say sacrilegious, but that would be sacrilegious. Okay, you ready for this one? Sackety sack, don't sack back. This was a really bad idea. Sack of potatoes. Ooh, how about suffering sack attack? Like that one. The Great North returns with all new episodes. Hey, North. That's not a saying. It's an energy, Dad. Don't question it. Sunday, January 7th on Fox. Here we go. Today's weather is brought to you by Fire Farms. Fire Farms is Belfast number one dispensary, offering a great selection of pipes, water pipes, CBD products, and much more. Let's talk about the advisories going up. Look way off there to our south and west. That is a winter storm watch for later on Sunday. Uh, but give you an idea what's coming our direction for Sunday. We do have some weather on the horizon. Out there today, though, high temperatures up near 40, 39 here in Bangor, also Bar Harbor, 34 Milnake, but that was many hours ago then the cold front came through the wind shifted out of the northwest and we've been dropping ever since into the teens and now feel like temperatures out there around zero courtesy of a really gusty northwest wind that will likely stay with us tonight and through much of tomorrow so tomorrow is not going to feel like today it's going to be much colder with high temperatures uh, in the low to mid 20s across the area tomorrow let's check on el nino a very strong el nino year of course record-breaking ocean temperatures out here it's been disrupting the weather patterns across the world, as you know, uh, for many hours, though, and days. That gave us lots of weather earlier last month. Uh, that's now changing, though. we got a break in there, and we'll likely get back in that storm track, though, beginning later on this month and probably toward the end of the month as well, as there are several more systems on the way. System 1, though, is out there right now. It, just, it came through earlier today. Just a quick cold front. Not a lot going on here. We're talking uh, dusting of snow across the area. That's now gone. The bigger story though behind it is the wind has shifted out of the northwest, that giving us some cooler temperatures. And we're in the freezer tonight and throughout the day tomorrow with cooler temperatures out there. The bigger story though is though a clearing skies tonight. And then off to the west of us, there is our next system, right? So a series of these now, the pattern's changing with the El Nino forecast kind of dwindling down. We have this system here, followed by that system there. A very active pattern setting up for next week. But the first one getting in here likely later Sunday into Monday, and that's going to bring us some snowfall across our region. Our forecast, I'm looking at mostly clear skies tonight, lots of radiational cooling and cool temperatures. Tomorrow's going to be a pretty nice day. We have some sun, some clouds tomorrow, followed by increasing clouds tomorrow night. Not a big deal at all. A nice day for us on Saturday. High temperatures back in the 20s, followed by increasing clouds on Sunday and likely bringing us some snow showers later Sunday into Monday. Some of that snow for a couple of us could be heavy on Sunday night. Our forecast guess over tonight though it's probably cloudy skies a bit breezy out there low temperatures down near 14 with feel like temperatures down near zero for tomorrow all right so lots of sunshine tomorrow and breezy uh, the wind it could gust near 25 tomorrow making that 26 feel much colder and then looking ahead your five-day forecast shows tomorrow 26 23 for saturday there's that chance for some snow on sunday sunday into early parts of monday morning we'll likely get a breakthrough tuesday then before our next system gets in here late tuesday into wednesday of next Next week. All right. Yeah, so a lot of us waiting for it will nice be it will be nice to finally have some snow on the ground, I think. And at a minimum, you know, the temperatures are low enough where, you know, those businesses who make snow. Yeah, you've got the right conditions for exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. All right. Well, sports is coming right up next. Stay with us. Whether it's coaching kids soccer, volunteering at the local firehouse, helping out at the food pantry, or providing the children of our employees with scholarships. The New England Toyota dealers and the thousands of people we employ play a role in lifting up the community. 
We're proud to serve you and to be part of those things that benefit us all. Toyota. Let's go places. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years. Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine Lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate, 974-7815. From the land to the sea, Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our Hideaway Lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekends with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. Oversharing can be spiritual. Name someone you had a romantic dream about. My minister. Praise the Lord, Pastor. <laughs> It can be loving. You love to plant a big wet kiss on Steve Harvey's what? Lips. <laughs> Your lips ain't big enough for these lips. It can be wet. Name someone who has touched your bare body. The pool guy. Overshare with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Tonight's Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with high school hockey. Bangor is 5-1 after their best season ever last year. And the team sees great things again this year with a big returning cast and a little extra push in playing for a fallen mentor. Really, I thought it was our year that year, but we're riding off a lot of momentum. That is an understatement as Bangor boys hockey is 5-1 to start the year, coming off a Cinderella state semifinal berth last season. We had a good finish last year, really strong. We had a slow start, and you know, we're looking to get back into those games again, you know, obviously in 2024. Their offense has all of the potential to get them there. In the early goings, they've been on fire, scoring five goals a game. And it all comes down to depth and complimentary hockey. You know, good defense translates to good offense. I think we have a really good breakout going for us right now, and that's giving us a lot of good odd man rushes, which is really just translating to a lot more offense. It also helps that defense is allowing just two goals a game. With help in net from underclassmen Cody McHugh, Miles Worcester, and Cole Fernald their internal competition driving their success. All three goalies are young, you know, underclassmen, sophomores, or freshmen, and you know, they're working every day, competing, battling to play in the starting spot, and our goalie coach is you know, really working well with them and making them better every day at practice. The Rams' wins have not come against the stiffest competition, but they played Class A top team Lewiston to a one-goal game in their only loss a confidence boost and chance for some valuable lessons to be learned. We knew they were going to be a top team and honestly I think we performed fairly well given the circumstances that we are in. It shows us a learning tool where we have to play for 45 minutes and, and play the complete game both back end and, and front end of the ice. With this being nearly the same team as last year, the Rams think they can make another run. With added motivation in playing to honor former coach, Maine Black Bear, and forward Mark Andre's father, the late Guy Perron. Everyone here really wants to just get the state championship win and dedicate it all to him. This is all for him. I, I mean, like, when, I, when, he's up, when he was up there watching us, it was great. So I'm just, I'm just very happy. Hopefully the end is very well. Best of luck to them the rest of the way. Now to the New England Patriots. ESPN is reporting that Patriots head coach Bill Belichick is scheduled to meet with both Robert and Jonathan Kraft on Monday. Pat's beat writer Mike Reese telling the Get Up show Thursday that the Krafts are looking for answers as to why things have fallen off so dramatically this season. In any event, the Pats still have to get ready for Sunday's season finale against the Jets at Gillette, where it could be Snow Bowl Part 2. Patriots quarterback Bailey Zappi says that could be a lot of fun. It would be my... Either my first or second time playing in the snow, so it's going to be exciting. Um, from Texas, you know, we don't really play in snow very much, so um, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be a great environment last game. Try to end the year out strong, so I'm ready for it. 
All right, now to some college hoops. Maine women's basketball starting their America East slate Thursday night, visiting the River Hawks of UMass Lowell. Black Bears an all-time 19-2 against them heading into tonight. Pretty good record. Early first quarter, and Simon is multi-talented, but how about playing quarterback a dot all the way down to Annika Halen for the deuce. Later on, Riverhawks taking the lead here. Sydney Watkins finds Abby Lindsay on the wing, and her three-pointer goes down. To the second quarter, Maine's Adriana Smith working near the paint, and with moves like this, you're just tough to contend with. She had a double-double in the first half and finished with 23-15. and 15. Finally, final seconds of the third, Caroline Dotsie gets Sarah Hodgson, and she nails it from deep at the buzzer. Maine, 1-0 in conference play, 55-43 is the final. Okay, now to the high school hardwood we go. Yesterday we brought you Old Town and Ellsworth in girls action, two of the top teams in B North. Thursday night, the unbeaten Coyote boys welcomed Ellsworth, who are also the top team in B North boys. Pretty much a full house at McKenzie Gym for this one. Let's go to the second quarter here. Ellsworth leads, Josiah James Chin. A little shake, bake, take, and make from inside the foul line. Final seconds of the half now. Old Town's Grayson Tebow off the rebound. Hurls it down to Aiden Gom at the buzzer. Drills the deep two, and the place explodes. Tie game at the half. Third quarter, Old Town up eight. Braden King to Chance Mercier, and he swishes the long-range three to pull it to five. But Old Town pulling away in the fourth. Here's Gom to Brendan Mahaney. Three ball, Gets it to go. Yotes up 11, and they go on to win 64-52 to stay unbeaten. Okay, now to some other scores from the area. Class A girls hockey, Chevrolet over Penobscot Pioneers 3-2. Class AA girls basketball, Bangor 44-34 over Edward Little. Class C boys basketball, Matt Nawcook 50-47 over Lee Academy. And Class B boys basketball, Orono 81-38 over Foxcroft Academy. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. CEM DP Porter Contractors has been in business for over 40 years in the Bangor area. We specialize in commercial, medical, and residential design build construction, as well as building maintenance and renovations. CEM DP Porter Contractors is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions, including carpenters and a project manager superintendent. We offer vacation, holidays, a 3% IRA match, competitive pay, and a family-oriented environment. If interested in applying, please contact Jason at 848-7486. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Do you need to replace your old, worn-out windows? Then you need to call Renewal by Anderson today. We're the replacement window division of Anderson, which means you can get your project started right away by scheduling a free in-home consultation. Ask your consultant about pricing options, including our one-year price lot guarantee quote. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. This fantastic money-saving deal with great financing and soon. Installation is always included. Call now. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snowblowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Our first category is all-inclusive. Pack your bags. We're talking about a resort. There would be a, a oh. cart that holds your luggage, a luggage cart. Luggage cart. Luggage cart. Yeah. <laughs> Dictionary. The way Colton yeah. comes up with these things here at a resort, there are carts. There are carts that hold your luggage. There's a luggage cart. <laughs> He's a real trip. Music. Piano, piano, piano keys. Music. Keys. Piano keys. Piano keys. You're going to Canada. Every weekday. Weekdays at 10 on Fox 22. This is Sheldon Cooper's Theory of Relativity. Yeah! Young Sheldon, five times a week on Fox 22.
Police departments often face challenges finding enough money to buy equipment to help protect officers on the job. So when an opportunity came up for the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office to apply for a grant for new safety equipment, they made their pitch. On Thursday, Sheriff Troy Morton was joined by the parents of Maine State Trooper Jeffrey Parola, yeah, who died in the line of duty line. back in 1994. Since then, his parents have been raising money to go to departments that are in need of equipment to help keep officers safe. So the Spirit of Blue Foundation was created, and today they awarded a grant of almost $4,500 for Guardian Angel lighting devices. Today, they're tight budgets. Uh, there are the limited grant opportunities sometimes for different pieces of equipment. And then uh, again, I'm proud of our deputies to take the lead to not only find uh, a solution to a problem that we knew existed, but to go out and find that there's actually funding that allowed us to do that. Three devices were purchased with this grant. The Guardian Angel offers hands-free lights to deputies, whether it's during a traffic stop or when entering a dark room. The idea is to help members of the sheriff's office be seen and to be able to see others as they do their jobs. On the surface, the Bar Harbor Oceanarium and Education Center brings together a variety of main sea life for people to gaze at. But what do they do after they close their doors to visitors? Our Doug Banks takes us there. You might see their sign alongside Route 3. Maybe it was social media with lobsterman Jacob Knowles and his rare friend, Bowie the Lobster. Yeah. Or you're one of the many who stopped by over the summer. But just because the temperature drops and their doors close, their workload remains the same. We're continuing to do care and maintenance on all of the, the homes that we've created for them. And we're also looking at continuing to build out the, the current facilities. One of the things the Oceanarium does is research. A project involving Mount Desert Island students, they placed bio boxes on the ocean floor around the facility to understand the impact green crabs have on the soft shell clam population. We're just like one of many institutes that are, are currently doing this to try to get better ideas of, of where do these clams want to live if they're not being eaten. Inside their facility, Plans for the future are underway, including building tanks to nurture young lobsters during their first stages of life. While the homes of these colorful creatures get a fresh coat of paint, let's get some clams in for the lobsters as well. They're being fed pretty well too. Although their work is ever-changing, one thing that remains constant is their mission. It's, it's obviously a hook to see the interesting creatures and play with them and see them up close when you really can't very well when you're just out there looking at the ocean. Um, and to the extent that that educates people about science and the scientific process and the conservation efforts that are going on to uh, maintain this wonderful resource, um, we're a small part of that. Well, the common goal is a sustainable, is a sustainable ocean where we, can, where we can continue to enjoy lobsters um, while also making sure that they're happy and healthy out in the ocean. In Bar Harbor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Definitely a 24-7, 365 mission going on there. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just amazing to, to learn about all the work that they're doing behind the scenes. And, yeah. You know, definitely makes you feel a lot better about, um, I guess, just the state of of the lobster industry, knowing that they're putting so much work. You also work. just get a, a peek at some really cool sea creatures, exactly. which, you know, not all of us really get the opportunity to do that on a regular basis. So I yeah. feel like, you know, you, you, you care more when you can see it and touch it and understand that it has a place in our world. Yeah, it has such a great effect. For sure. Indeed. All right, folks, well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at Fox 22 News, good night. Good night, everyone.